Hi there. How are you? It's us. <laughs> Not Gina good. and Jimmy. It's us and Zoe behind the Trying to get us here. in frame. There we go. Okay. Are we in frame? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're in frame. I've been framed. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how does she do that with his eyebrow? I, I, I can't Who? do it. Justin. Oh, I don't know. He can, do, he can raise one eyebrow at a time. It's muscle memory. He, I remember him practicing for a long time in front of his mirror when he was a kid. Well, if it's muscle memory, I mean, how do you... I don't know. It's focus. It's like belly dancing. It's like extreme focus on that particular muscle. And then just trying to... Even if you have to, like, do it yourself with your finger as far as an eyebrow is concerned... You know, with belly dancing, it's different. You can't really use your hands to try to make your torso go in that direction. But, like, you know, when you're trying to do your eyebrow thing, you can kind of just do that to sort of feel how it works, and then it just takes practice and time. Well, it just feels like I have Although a I finger can't do on my it. eyebrow. Doesn't, I mean, I can't feel my muscle doing anything. Anyway, I think it's kind of cool people that can do Phil Collins can do that, too. I've seen him do it. Oh, really? Yeah. It's just, uh, if you're an actor or something along those lines, I guess it helps with your expressionism or your expressions. If you can do that, especially with either eyebrow. I, I can't do it with yeah. either one of them. Well, okay, today's, anyway. today's focus <laughs> is focus? Um, we actually are going to talk about two different day trips that we did, but to the same antique store. In Columbiana, Ohio. And the first time we went to this store, it's called the Cluttered Cupboard. And we highly recommend you going there if you love antique shopping. As for Shane. They have the coolest stuff. They have silver. They have coins. They have, like, houseware items. And um, they have clothing and handbags and jewelry. They have everything. Lighting. Really, really cool stuff. And we got to meet the owner, Shane. And the other thing that's really neat about the place is that they have a cafe inside. I'm not quite sure what the cafe is called, but it's right when you come through the store in the back. And the food is absolutely delicious. Thumbs up on that. I'm a creature of habit, so we went there twice to eat. And the second time, well, the first time we went, we went with our friend Kathy to antique shop and, and eat at the cafe. And the second time we went, it was just Jimmy and me. We went on a day trip uh, just recently. And I got the same thing because I'm a creature of habit. And so what I got was a breakfast sandwich. And it's just absolutely delicious. It's uh, an egg. It's a scrambled egg. Um, but they spread it out so much on a, an entire, like, cut of, like, two pieces of bread to make the sandwich of Mancini toast. It's yeah. Mancini's bread. Yeah. It's very good. And it's a local Pittsburgh thing, if I'm honest. Yes, I think it is. And then, of it's course, really crispy good. bacon, cheddar cheese. And then they also serve it with, you get a choice of a potato, either hash browns or their potatoes. So their potatoes are like, their home fries are not really home fries, but they're like a cheesy mix of potato and cheese and onion. It's so delicious. Very good. That's what I got both times. And then Jimmy got, the first time, the breakfast sandwich, like I did, but no egg and sausage on his. And then the second time when he and I went together, you got um, Italian. an Italian, kind of like a Cuban sandwich. If you've been uh, to a place that sells a Cuban sandwich, um, I don't know if they have them around here, but they did have them in Florida when we went to visit I don't think they have my parents. Them but anyhow, yeah, so while we were there, um, the first time we went, we didn't spend a whole lot of money the first time, and we got a few selected items, which were very cool. So we're going to show those to you first. Let's get on with it. So they had, at this particular time, some Christmas items that were marked on sale, like half off. So Jimmy actually found this. So I'll let you show this. And we love tins. We I love thought this was tins. a very cool tin. And this was, as Dina said, it was Christmassy, and so therefore it was marked half off. And this was four dollars at half off. Which is still a good price. It would be two dollars. And one of the cool things is that if I took the top off. So it's not just the tin. It's not just the tin. This is like a beaded garland. Yes. Right? So there's 
there's actually two of these strands, two of these long gold strands. And then underneath, which Jimmy didn't see, there's four of these beautiful beaded strands. So we can not only dress our Christmas tree, which we're planning on doing. You're so funny. We're planning on doing this year since we collected this together uh, and using this garland. But this would also be beautiful across our living room window. I, I look like one of those belly dancing girls with the beads on her head, huh? No comments. <laughs> no offense, No. But they do that. But they, I love these. So there's four of these, and then there's two of these strands. And we can keep them in the collection today in order to store them with our holidays. Um, we might just decorate our next Christmas tree. Yeah, Christmas. I think we're going to. Two bucks. I thought that was a pretty good deal, two dollars. Um, for those of you that are interested in knowing, we actually have several trees. Um, we, we have a tree that we have in our living room, of course, and this particular year um, we decided to use our smaller tree, just the way our living room lounge is des designed now that we're no longer with mom and this house has become ours. Um, our living room lounge is more of um, kind of like we have... We flipped the sofa. So for those of you that have been following us for a while and remember the living room lounge during pandemic when we did our show, our we live show. We do it now the way things are. Um, the couch was on the opposite side, and it was just set up different. Now it's almost like an I Dream of Jeannie, the way our couch is rounded. We're inside the bottle. Yeah, we're inside the bottle. So um, we, we have our coffee table set up. And our smaller tree is on our coffee table, so it sits in front of the living room window. And then our large size tree, our six foot tree, um, and we use artificial trees just because it's just less clean up and just, it's been easier for us through the years. But we, um, we love live trees though. But anyways, our large tree we keep in our kitchen because our kitchen is really like the heart of the home. It's, it's a very large kitchen, and it just looks so beautiful in there next to our hutch. So I think this garland is going to be beautiful on probably our main tree in the kitchen. But uh, we might use some of the garland, like I said, in the living room on the windows. And then we also have, we keep a small tree, like a little tiny, I'm not in frame, a little tiny tree about this tall <laughs> in our bedroom. We have a... <coughs> We have a, an artificial fireplace um, with a mantle in our bedroom, and we keep a small tree there. We'll show it to you one day. One of these days. We're still planning on the home tour. So we got that, and that was Christmas items. And then I found this. So this was $2 half off, so we got it for a dollar. Not sure what I'm going to do with this at this point. We may keep them, or we may keep one and gift one or gift both of them. But these are beautiful. They're handmade. I'm not in frame. I hate that. Um, these are beautiful poinsettias, crocheted pot holders, but they can also be decor for Christmas time. These are really gorgeous. I really don't know yet if we're going to gift these to anybody because I'm not sure that our children are really into this decor, but we love this kind of thing. Now, Nikki might be because she loves handmade things. So you just buy stuff to give, give it away? Well, I'm always looking for Christmas gifts all the time. I, I'm like a Christmas in July shopper, and I purchase these before July, of course, but um, I don't know. Year-round, if I see something that I think somebody might like or might make a beautiful Christmas gift, I keep them, and I put them away. And then sometimes Spirit will just guide me and tell me who that gift would be suited for. But we may just keep these because we purchase them together. And it was a really great trip. And I think these would look beautiful in our kitchen as well. So more than likely, I think we might keep them. What do you guys think? Tell us. Do you think we should keep them? Knowing that you know how we are together as a couple. And we love, like, memorabilia from things that we've done together. Tell us what you think. If you think we should keep these or if we should gift these. Yeah, tell us what you think. Yeah. Okay, so then those are the those are the Christmas things we got. And then we're gonna save the dust for last. So then this was something that I found and Jimmy thought it was absolutely gorgeous. We love collecting home decor and and home decor things that we can use, that we can literally use. 
It's nice when it's useful. Like the tin. When it has a purpose. Yes, like the tin. We can always use it at Christmas time. Um, and we will keep that because we have a collection of tins. Um, and then also we, it's for storage. And um, we'll use it maybe at Christmas time to put under the tree. as like, you know, we, we like to decorate under the tree because we don't have a lot of space under the tree for everyone's gifts so we decorate with things that look like wrapped packages to keep it limited but still look like we have Christmas gifts under the tree so it's really kind of fun and cool so we might do the tin under there and then of course the garland will be used but this was something we thought would be perfect for usage in our kitchen not only for ourselves but whenever we host our family and or our friends and it's really beautiful for a few reasons. One is it's the perfect bowl for spring and summer, but also because it reminded us of um, my mother-in-law, my mill, and Jimmy's mom. She loved tulips, and this was a beautiful glass bowl of the most gorgeous tulips. So beautiful. I can envision putting a salad in here or a macaroni or, you know, it's just gorgeous. It needs cleaned up. I have to wash it yet and it has some tape on it from where the inside here where the um, the sticker was. But I think we got this for $4. I could not pass this up. It's so beautiful. I think my mother would paint it. <laughs> I hope not because, well, it, you know. What? You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. I'm, I'm well, I would never theater. paint this. It's just, I love how she in the light. It's a painting thing. Yeah, I love how in the light when you turn it, you can see the orange, you can see the blue. It almost has a pink hue when you turn it in another direction. So yes, it does, you're right. It's gorgeous. It's a really deep bowl. I don't, I don't know that it's crystal. I'm it's not, not sure. It's crystal. I mean, it's... Yeah, I think it's just glass, but it's, not it's so lovely and can pass this up, and I can't wait to use it in our magical kitchen. If you would like to buy it, it's sold. So you no, thirty nine ninety five. We're not selling oh, sure. that. It reminds me of my milk. Okay, and then on our way out when we were paying, I spotted this. She did. And this is super cool because Jimmy and I are um, Lord of the Rings fans. Definitely. And Jimmy's like, I don't know. He hates spending money on himself. But I said, oh, you have to get it. You have to treat yourself. I'm so glad I'll you let did. you show it. This is uh, one of... I don't know if you're familiar with The Lord of the Rings. Um, started off with The Hobbit, which I read back in 1971. Very, very good book. And then, of course, it got me interested in the um, trilogy, which followed. And... There was a character that was introduced in The Hobbit, and he had this magical ring that he had found, and it made you invisible. So, anyway, Bilbo Baggins ended up with it, and um, this guy here was just devastated because he lost it, and Bilbo found it. So, this is Gollum. So Gollum chased Bilbo Baggins all over the place yeah, trying to um, yeah. get the ring back. And this, believe it or not, the, the guy that played Gollum was from West Aliquippa, which is maybe oh, not too far from where we live. And, oh, gosh, I wish I could remember his name. Andy Cir Circus, I think his name is. And he won uh, at a, a grand, no, an Academy Award for his portrayal of this character, Gollum. So we love this thing. I, I, I tell you, the price on this was thirty nine ninety nine, which is a great price. Which is a great price, and I, I, I'm just so so thankful that uh, Dina told me to get this. The only thing about it is that I don't think that we would ever sell it. But the box no. is a little bit damaged at the top, as you can see. I wouldn't sell it. Wait a minute. I'm in, out of frame. Right here. Um, just because some of the glue had come come off. Um, I don't know why that happened. Or maybe somebody kind of tore into it. I don't know. But other than that, the box is in great shape. It comes with a DVD as well. I was just going to say And that. we're not sure because we didn't open the DVD because we don't really know if we should. But the box is super cool. On the back of the box, it has one of the battle scenes. It does. Ah, oh, fucking... Here. It's kind of like doing weather on TV. Everything's backwards. 
there, yeah. Not that I've ever done weather on TV, but I've seen how it was. So done. we're going to take Gollum out, right, and show you guys. We, I don't know if we could take him out. No, but oh, he's still he kind can't. of attached. Yeah, he's he's in the box. The yeah, we can't. Down is taking yeah. this out. So this is cool. The artwork on that is amazing. So yeah, this is pretty, this is still sealed. This has never even been opened. This is still in the cellar wrap, and we're not sure if this is a DVD about the making of Gollum and how Andy Circus went about putting all these attachments. He was in a green suit, basically, from head to toe, and um, he had all these electrodes all over him so that when he moved, the computer would remember his movements, and then when they put the animation in, I guess it's on a CGI, whatever the case may be, of Gollum, they can make him move the way that Andy Serkis was moving. Just uh, technology, oh man, it was the first time that was ever done, and it was just incredible. If you haven't seen The Lord of the Rings, I suggest you watch it, just three of them. Well, I just found something in the box that I don't think we had discovered earlier. This is actually, if you were to find this somewhere in one of those catalogs, that you know, a collector's catalog, so this is actually what we have in this box, and it says that, I don't see the date, but it was originally seventy nine ninety five to order this particular Gollum with the um, DVD. So it says here, under the direction of visual effects artist Richard Taylor and the director Peter Jackson, Sideshow Weta Collectibles has created the ultimate companion piece to the Smeagol statue featured in the Lord of the Rings Two Towers Collectors DVD gift set. So... I guess this is the Lord of the Rings, right? I, if that's what it says. Uh, <coughs> but anyways, it also comes with oh, a certificate numbered. of authenticity. And it's hand numbered, probably on the uh, certificate of authenticity, perhaps. Is your number? It's numbered somewhere. He might be numbered on the bottom of him. Yeah, perhaps. But yeah, um, I don't know, because it doesn't really say what this, other than Gollum, it says Gollum, so this might be about the making of Gollum. That's what I thought. Yeah. And this is limited to only 7,500 statues worldwide. That's all there are. 7,500, and we have one of them right here. So that means there's only 7,499 left out there that you can buy. Yeah, and I don't see if you're lucky the number, but it's probably numbered inside on the bottom of the sculpture. I think it's number one. It's <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, it's very cool. So whoever purchased this originally, it was seventy nine ninety five, And now, if we were to look this up, I can't remember, I don't think we did. But yeah. I think it would be worth a lot more because it's it's older now, you know? It's not a new piece. Oh, so this is what happened right here. For whatever reason, this came. They can see it, yeah. Oh, is that the number on the back? No, maybe not. No. But this is this is what happened to the box. Oh. Yeah, but it's, it's not a big deal. Tape. We could yeah. just basically fix that if we were, but if we were, you know, concerned about selling it. But we're not. We're going to keep it because we're in the process of developing um, little sections here at the Storybook Cottage of our collectibles, and so we would definitely want to keep this and use this as a collectible. Anyway, we were uh, that's that was our prized purchase of the day. And that was our first trip there. And, then and we weren't even going to buy it. You know, Gina's like, yeah, you got to get it, you got to get it. So uh, okay, if you insist. We had so much fun. We went back just recently, and upon this particular trip, um, Jimmy had more time to look through the albums. That's another thing that they had there that we didn't mention earlier. They had a ton of vintage albums. So Jimmy got a couple of albums. First of all, uh, I happened to run across this. I really enjoy finding picture discs 
or albums that are colored, you, you know, the, the vinyl is colored, uh, other than black. I like to find things that are like blue, pink. Dolly Parton had a, a pink album, and I have several of them that are colored and several picture albums. So, I saw this one. This is Songs and Dialogue from the original motion picture soundtrack of, I believe it's uh, Peter and the Wolf, right? No, The Fox and the Hound. So cute. The Fox and the Hound. And this is a uh, Disney album. And this is the back. So if you're saying, well, what do you mean picture album? That's, that's a picture of an album. Well, no, that's not what I mean. The album actually has a picture on it. How cool is that? I just, I love that. And I love collecting things like that. Fox and the Hound. So that was, I think, like $8 or something for that. Yeah. Yeah, because your other album was 10 But that is beautiful. And that is just super cool just to add to our collection. And that's Love playable, it. isn't it? Oh, yeah, of course. So we could play that on our record player? This was 10 Oh, that was 10 Yeah, this was 10 because, I'm sure, because of the picture. Oh. And, you know. Okay. So, if you've seen anything on, on my Facebook page, Instagram page, Twitter page, if you've watched anything here on YouTube that Dina and I have done, you know that we are tremendous Genesis fans, yes. especially when Peter Gabriel was in the band. After Peter Gabriel left, Trick of the Tail was the next album out, and I kind of like that one because Phil Collins actually sounded an awful lot like Peter Gabriel, and a lot of people couldn't even tell the differences in their voice on that album. And then they came out with an album called Wind and Weathering, with uh, Steve Hackett, that was his last album, actually, uh, that he played on with Genesis. And he quit after that, and then there were three. But Wind and Weathering, after they became, and then there were three, I didn't have as much interest in them because they became more poppy, and I liked more of the progressive stuff uh, that Genesis did. So I found Wind and Weathering. Now, I've already got two copies of this, but... You can never have too many Genesis albums. <laughs> That's my philosophy. So that was eight bucks, I guess. So this one was eight dollars, and this is Wind and Weathering, and it's got it's it's an amazing album. Steve Hackett's um, last album with Genesis, and the reason Steve well, I'm not going to tell you the reason Steve left. Uh, you can probably find well, I don't even know if you can find it online. Anyways, that would be long long nigger. It, 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 we could talk about that maybe in a minute. Yeah, because there was too much talent in the band. Everybody wanted their songs to be on the albums. Oh. And Phil Collins, Mike Rutherford, and Tony Banks were the original members. Well, Phil wasn't. But um, anyway, they didn't feel there was very much room to put Steve Hackett's material on their albums. And so, therefore, Steve decided he wanted to go out and embark on a solo career, which he did. And he's going to be in Pittsburgh coming up, and uh, I just, we love seeing Steve Hackett. You know, we we've gone to just about every show that he's had here in the area. Peter Gabriel, he's my hero, and I go to see him whenever whenever he's within a four hour drive. <laughs> yeah, basically, I turned Dina on to him when we first met, and we ate meatballs and then went to the show. <laughs> yeah, it was a cool little. Um I don't know. It was like a happy hour thing at the hotel where we stayed at. It was really fun yeah. for guests that were at the hotel. So we got to have like a a light dinner basically before the show. It was, it was a nice date. It was kind of like a wine and cheese thing. Yeah. It had snackies and yeah, was nice. meatballs or whatever. It just happened to be one of them. Okay, are we done? Are we doing another one? Well, or that's or that. But I wanted to mention too, before we move on to the other things we got on this, this trip here is uh, if you like collecting old records, you might know already, but... If you go to an antique store, of course, they're going to be much more expensive. And we were in an antique store. But if you go to, like, a thrift store, for example, Goodwill or Salvation Army, um, St. Vincent de Paul, you can get albums for, like, a dollar. 79 cents sometimes. Yeah. yeah, it's amazing. And we've done that, too, to add to our collection. And if you want to know how to care for vinyl, 
Oh, like a friend yeah. named Topper Freilich. And he has a YouTube channel. And one of them... Does he still? I believe so. Okay. I think, well, the channel's still on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyway, if you go to Topper, Topper Freilich, T-O-P-P-E-R-F-R-A-L-I-C-K, I think there's a C. And he also has a YouTube channel called Oddbox Topper, right? Not yeah. Oddbox. 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 Oddbox Topper. He's the coolest guy. He is. And you know what? If you can't find it, just leave us a message because we love hearing from you guys in the description box below, and we will get back to you with a link to his information. It's well worth it, believe me, especially if you're into vinyl. Yeah. He, he teaches you how to take care of vinyl. If your vinyl is damaged, how it can be repaired, if it can be repaired. Uh, it's just awesome. Check it out. Yeah. Oddbox Topper on YouTube. So some of the other items that we got on this particular trip, it was, just, it was so much fun. Um, so upstairs is where we got the albums. And then there's a downstairs section. I don't think we got anything down there except this one piece that I got from okay. the show. But anyways, every time that I've been to the cluttered cupboard, and I went the last time with Jimmy, the time before that, I was there with my friend Kathy, and then the time before that, Kathy and I had gone, just the two of us. And I saw... I. I always love some of the jewelry that they have down in the basement because it's listed for a dollar. And I found some really cool pieces. And I told myself before we went on this little day trip that if this particular necklace was still there, because I always passed it up, I was going to get it. So it was still there, and I got it. And I love it. I got it for a dollar. And I figured if I don't wear it, I do sell a lot of my um, vintage clothing items and accessories on my Poshmark closet as well as Milady Leela's wardrobe on Instagram and on Facebook and I thought I could throw this in as a little gift with purchase kind of thing you know at some point in time but I just thought it was really cool it's you know it's not real silver or anything but it's a nice little chain necklace to add to layer or something like that um, so I figured hey for a dollar I'll either keep it or send it off as a gift with purchase so we did get that. Um, but some of the other things we got that day, this was an amazing find. I am so excited. Now, some of you that watch these videos, if you're men, you're probably not going to be, unless you cook, you're not going to be interested in this. Um, if you cook, you will. But for the women that love vintage cookware and vintage bakeware, this is an old-fashioned Pyrex casserole dish with the cover that I got for $18 and I said to Jimmy when I found it we have to buy this I hate spending that kind of money honestly on on things like at antique stores and and like Salvation Armies and stuff like that I always try to keep my budget within like no more than $10 no more than $10 but that doesn't always happen when it came to something like this, $18 is a bargain because these go on eBay for like up to $85, sometimes more than that. This is amazing. And it matches some of the Corral China that we inherited from Jimmy's mom um, on the top of the casserole dish. And the bottom of the casserole dish is yellow, which matches our vintage kitchen. So hold on to that for one second. This is the bottom of the Pyrex, and these go from table to oven to freezer. They're amazing. I can't remember the name of this particular pattern, but the pattern on both the top of the casserole dish and the bottom is the same, except the bottom of the dish is this gorgeous cornflower yellow, and then the top of the dish is white, with the cornflower yellow. So I'm going to show you how it goes together as a covered casserole dish. But the cool thing about it is that not only can you use the casserole dish for serving, you can also use the top of the casserole dish for serving as well. Like if you wanted to put, you know, roast or chicken or whatever on top of it and bring it to your table. This is just an amazing, amazing find. So for $18, I think we got a fabulous deal. And Shane wrapped it up so beautifully too. He, he really prepared it for us so we could transport it 
back to our home very safely. It's a cool store, and Shane is a cool guy. If you go there, yeah. tell them that uh, Jimmy and Dina sent you, or Dina and Jimmy. Yeah. Whichever the case may be. So we got that. And then, next, and then. a few other items that we found. And these are all houseware. And he just wrapped them so nicely. I'm not afraid. So nicely. This was a really beautiful dish. Jimmy actually took a picture of this with me holding it. This is from Austria. And we got this one for $3.50. I thought it was a beautiful bargain. And I will probably keep this on my vintage vanity. And I love roses. And this is what it looks like. It's this beautiful little covered dish that you could keep jewelry in or whatever. I mean, it's just sometimes people like to decant their powders and things like that and put powder in there and then you could add a powder puff. It's just really gorgeous. And it is marked on the bottom, which you may not be able to see very well, but it's marked from Austria on the bottom. And I just thought, wait a minute, <laughs> I just thought it was really lovely. And I love the color green because I have... Um, this is a vintage green that they don't really use in painting porcelain anymore. That is a cool color uh, green. Yeah, it is a porcelain piece. And um, I purchased at the Salvation Army several months ago a beautiful little vase. It was a tiny little tabletop vase that kind of matches this green. So I thought it would be gorgeous on my vanity. Here's your phone, by the way. Thank you. So got that. And then this was on sale. This was marked for seven dollars and fifty cents. That's not my phone. Um. Oh, that's my other phone. That's Sorry. Phone. Yeah. That's that's my other phone. Um. Let's see. Is that your yeah. business phone? Yeah. Yeah. Call one eight hundred Dina. No. Talk to her about that phone. This one. Uh. This one was marked at seven dollars, but it was half off, so I got it for three fifty. And it matches our kitchen. It's a beautiful cornflower yellow pitcher. And what I liked about this is you could actually use this if you were doing like syrups or you were doing um, like milk if you were having, you know, like a tea party or having some people over for coffee and you wanted something a little bit larger than a regular creamer, but not anything large as a main size pitcher, you could also use it to put flowers in on your table. So there's many uses, and I love items, as said earlier, that we can use for different purposes in our storybook cottage. So, yeah, this is really gorgeous. I love it, and I'm so delighted that we purchased it. Also... Jimmy wasn't really a fan of this one, but I like this little tray. Again, this is going to be for my vintage vanity in my wardrobe because I always need trays to put things in, whether it be cosmetics or hair clips or jewelry. This was $3, and we, we collect hobnail glass, milk glass, and this has a little bit of milk glass and the hobnail pattern. So this is the bottom. I thought it was really unique, and I don't have anything like this particular basket weave hobnail um, and then I like the little hobnail bumps here and then this is what the tray looks like so even inside my vanity drawers I thought this would be really lovely you know I may upload this video not only to our us channel but I I may upload it to my channel as well because all of my ladies that follow me love my hauls with antique shopping. So okay. probably do that. Feel free. Yeah. Hi, ladies. <laughs> and they, on my channel, it's it, my channel on YouTube is Milady Leela. Um, so you can visit there. We'll leave a link below, and or maybe we'll put it in a card above. But in any event, um, my ladies and some of the gentlemen that follow me over there, they love seeing Jimmy in my videos. He doesn't always make an appearance in my videos unless we're doing like a day trip or something like that, day in the life. So we can make this one of those times to get to see it. And then lastly, on our trip there, this was just exquisite. We both loved this piece and we had to get it. 
Um, this is again that vintage green color that you don't find today in painted porcelain and it's a variegated that's our mantel clock um, which was also a beautiful piece that we got from a friend of ours it used to be his mom's and he was just getting rid of it and I spotted it and um, he gave it to us so it's a beautiful mantel clock that Very obviously cool. chimes but um, thank you Denny yes thank you Denny if you watch our channel swoop um, but this green color is very beautiful because it's variegated. It starts out with a darker green, of which is, is like a, almost like that dark avocado green that they used to use in the 70s, mixed then down into the lighter green. And this is called a vintage hall pottery green dish. We got this for $4, you guys. And it was made in the USA. And it's number number 31. I don't really know this brand, but I'm going to have to look it up because I think that's cool. Yes. But this is the piece. It's so lovely. And you could use this for so many things. You could use this on a coffee table to put remotes in. You could use it on a coffee table to put, um, I don't know, little things that land on your coffee table. <laughs> Oh, if you're like ours, if you're like us, little things land on our coffee table oh, um, yes. that we need little bowls and things like that for. This is the bottom where it's it's numbered. If anybody knows about this, let us know in the comments below. Again, it's made by Hull. It's number thirty-one and made in the USA. And I just think it's exquisite. I love it Very cool. so much. I love it too. Uh, another thing that we might be able to do with this is put it on our bar and put, when we were having uh, a family gathering or, or a friend's gathering, put napkins in it for little cocktail napkins, things like that. Um, or it could also be a relish tray. Wouldn't that be nice? It would be nice. Yes, that would be a lovely relish tray here. when you're having a party. This is little Miss Zoe Beth. I'm sure you've seen her in some of our videos. But we... We love her. She's not comfortable. No, she's no, she in daddy's lap. So that, our friends, is... We took is, her for a walk today. Oh, you want to tell that story a little bit about how she loves the outside? She loves the outside, and so therefore we have... We try to take her for a walk around the block without a leash or anything. I just hold her in my arms, and she constantly lays there and purrs and purrs and purrs. And now she's become somewhat of a novelty because... People are noticing her. People are noticing her and uh, saying that it's very cool that a cat would just lie in my arms the way that she does. Today, someone actually stopped us. It, they were service people <laughs> power washing a home in our neighborhood. And somebody actually that worked with them stopped us and asked if he could take a picture of Zoe Beth to send to his girlfriend. His wife, yeah. And then he told us later, because they stopped at our house to look at our house and give us an estimate, um, they stopped at our house and said, oh, she loved the picture of your cat. <laughs> and this is how we walk, just like this. What do you mean, no? It is so. I hold you like this, and this is how we walk. Yeah. And she says no. It's like when we're walking, she will just lay here so contently and purr. Don't you? But right now, I think she wants down. Yeah. Get down if you want. So, or you can stay here. Good course. So that, our friends, That's it. is our haul of what we got at the antique stores. Oh, and one last thing I want to share is we try to stop at another store, but everything closes up there at 5 o'clock. So if you would ever like to travel... If you're not too far from the area of Columbiana, just know that everything closes at 5 o'clock. So you have to get your groove on early. But we stopped at this other antique store, and they were closed. And they were more of like a primitive design country store, but nevertheless, we wanted to kind of stop in and just see what they had. Not necessarily our style. Um, we're more into like um, French Baroque um, and um, like kind of um, like French cottage type of style decor and this was more of a like farmhouse primitive uh, and those of you that follow that style will know 
a lot of plaid and um, like dolls that don't really have like intricate faces and things like that you know like um, checkers um, like checkerboard patterns um, country stars and things like that but anyhow outside on the ground I found the most unique pine cones these are cool where are you going where are you going careful um, careful I found the most unique pine pine cones <laughs> also I'm putting it over there it's opposite um, I think they're really beautiful and I think they would look really pretty used as decor probably in the fall with some potpourri in a bowl perhaps even in that gorgeous green bowl or dish that we just showed that would look really pretty with potpourri and some beautiful pine cones so I love these and I will always remember that we collected them together these remind me of a dream I had one time they almost look like mushrooms they almost look like mushrooms that's why they remind me of a dream I yeah. had one time many many years ago I had a dream that there was this girl, and her name was Trudy, and she had a red pickup truck, and Trudy was driving around, I remember this but she was very whimsical, very it's magical, and Trudy would always go into the woods, and there were a group of what they called mushroom people that were in the woods, and these are what the mushroom people look like, just like this, seriously. And, as I said, she had a red truck, and when she would come, they would make sure there was nobody else around, and then they would magically come to life. And they had eyes, and they had arms that came down from here, here, and here. But underneath, they didn't have feet. They had this, it was almost like a ball bearing. And they could move around any way they wanted to, in any direction, and they were very quick, but any time somebody would come, they would stop immediately and close their eyes, and people didn't know that they had that capability, and that they were actually mushroom people. There's a lot more to the story, but it would take too long to tell. But I called my dream Trudy and the Mushroom People. So these were very fitting for us. And just so everyone knows, and you know, some of you might take this as being rude, but I'm just going to say it. All of the content that you see on our channel or anything that's written or said is all copywritten material, which means that you cannot take our ideas for any story or anything like that and use them as your own. And I know that sounds really rude, but uh, this is a story that Jimmy has copywritten written it's already copywritten so do not think that you can take the story and run with it just just had to put that out there because not everyone knows that sure. so if you think that I'm rude well I'm not I'm just stating facts <laughs> so um, yeah that's just with anything that you see online that's a little tip and trick by the way not just with us but anything you see that is written publicly or said publicly or shared publicly unless it's somebody else's material and they give you permission to use it it is copywritten material and it cannot be used unless you ask permission so there we go yeah anyhow that being said yeah so um i hope you enjoyed this video we had a, a really fun time sharing all this stuff with you from our little day trip adventure mm -hmm. and we hope that you enjoyed it and um if you have any questions about anything um maybe even if you're starting your own youtube channel or a page of some sort and you need information about copyright stuff you can always ask us because we have information about that so we do We'd love to help you out if you need if you need any help. Just ask. So uh, have a great day. We appreciate your time. We love you for being here with us. If you think that our channel is something that uh, your friends, family, and followers might enjoy, please spread the word and share our channel. Give our videos a thumbs up because that helps us on the algorithm of YouTube to get our videos out there so that we can grow. Ring the bell. And, yeah, and hit the little bell as well when you subscribe. We invite you to subscribe if you haven't done so already so that you get notified every time we post. So, Whatever it is. Yeah. We love you guys. Thank you so much for being here. And we wish you so much love, many, many blessings, and many friendships to come. Peace and love. Bye. Stay safe. <laughs>